So now we will be discussing about the most awaited kingdom, kingdom planting. Kingdom planting. This kingdom includes all those organisms which are eukaryotic, which are autotrophic and which are multicellular. So you can write eukaryotic, eukaryotic, then multicellular, multicellular and eukaryotic, multicellular and autotrophic autotrophic organisms come under the kingdom planting. Eukaryotic and then they are multicellular and then they will be autotrophic. But when you say multicellular there are few ex uh, exceptions also. There are exceptions also. So or unicellular you can write here. There are certain exceptions. There are certain algae. We will be discussing later on what is algae. So, but uh, those algae are actually unicellular. So, uh, you cannot say that all the plants are multicellular. No doubt. The plants which you see around us, the plants which we see around us, they are multicellular. What a picture uh, comes in your mind when you think of a plant. When I say plant, you can think of the uh, trees with those uh, canopy consisting of leaves, then branches, then stem, the trunk and then the roots. So this is the typical picture uh, which comes into your mind when I say plant or tree. Or then you will be thinking of the shrubs. Shrubs are what? Shrubs are the plants which are smaller than trees of a medium height. And then you will be thinking of the herbs. Herbs are small, uh, smaller than shrubs and then uh, the small, small plants like grasses and all. Grasses also come under herbs. So, what is the, uh, what are we going to do here is that we will be discussing about uh, all the five divisions of plants. And uh, one by one we will go. First, we will discuss about the simplest type of plant. So, what can you think? What, what is the simplest type of plant you can think of? Have you seen after the rainy season or when the weather is very damp or whether it uh, with the places where it rains very frequently, the surfaces are covered with a green uh, carpet-like structures. Hi, huh, this nature's carpet. Nature provides a carpet to us. It looks very beautiful. No, the uh, the uh, whole the surface, all the surface is covered with green substance. Or you can see in the some water bodies, in water bodies when you might be moving from a uh, train, that uh, scene, uh, you will be able to see that uh, picture when you uh, are traveling through a train and you're looking out of the window and then you will be seeing there are certain water bodies which are covered with green colored uh, uh, green colored plants. What are those plants? Those are the simplest type of plant. They are algae. Or we can call it thallophyta. Algae or thallophyta. Thallophyta. Or algae. Okay, they are the simplest type of plant. They are the simplest type of plants. Okay. Now the thallophyta, it has derived from the uh, word thallus. They consist of plant body is like thallus. Plant body is like thallus. What is a thallus? A simple aggregate like this. So you can call it a thallus. It is not differentiated into roots, stems or leaves. Nothing is present. Just a, a green colored uh, mass that is called thallus. So plant body is like thallus. Again it is photosynthetic because all the plants are autotrophic. There is no exception. No doubt again there are certain plants which are insectivores. But the primary mode of nutrition they also photosynthesize. They depend on other animals just for uh, certain nutrients like nitrogen. For their nitrogenous needs they trap certain insects. Then you have insectivorous plants like you have venus fly trap. You have bladder wort. Then you have certain parasitic plants like cascata. 
they have lost uh, their uh, mode of uh, uh, photosynthetic capability and uh, then they depend on other plants for their food so example is cascata cascata is a parasitic plant but most of the plants are autotrophic because that defines plant what is plant plant photosynthesis that defines plant okay so plant bodies like thallus now algae is also in uh, classified into three categories first is the green algae next is the brown algae and the red algae now this green algae brown algae and red algae uh, what is the basis of classifying this yes you're right the basis is the type of photosynthetic pigment which is present in these plants that is the basis for classifying into these three categories now uh, there are uh, examples of green algae the examples which are given in your book is just the example of green algae so i will just be mentioning those examples there are other examples of brown algae also red algae also you have brown algae like uh, ectocarpus fucus laminaria sargassum then you have a red algae like geridium gracilaria porphyra polysiphonia but you don't need it now so just the examples which are given in your book that is of green algae that is eulothrix eulothrix spirogyra uh what is next cara and ulva is given in your book there are other examples also but i wrote the examples which is given in the ncert so this was about algae what is the next kingdom another important point about algae is that they are predominantly aquatic you will mostly see algae in water bodies so that point is also worth to be mentioned they are predominantly it is visible predominantly aquatic predominantly aquatic now the next division that is bryophyta bryophyta the members of bryophyta is also called as amphibians of the plant kingdom why they live on the land they live on uh, humid places but they depend on water for their sexual needs uh, they depend on water for fertilization what is fertilization fertilization is the fusion of the male and the female gamete to form a zygote the zygote is a one cell structure which develops into a complete organism we all have started our life from a one cell zygote okay so these bryophytes depend on water for their sexual needs or say reproduction so that is why these animals are classified as amphibians of the plant kingdom amphibians of the plant kingdom now they all uh, they don't possess true roots true stems or true leaves but they possess root like stem like and leaf like structures uh, examples are funaria funaria is a moss again again the bryophyte is divided into two categories first is the liverworts and second is the moss you don't need to remember those things now but you just remember the examples examples of bryophyte so you can write here they possess pauses root like leaf like and stem like structures okay the root like structure is called the hold fast and the stem like structure is called the stipe and the leaf like structure is called the front root like structure is called the hold fast the leaf uh, the leaf like structure is called the front where to write 
I am writing it here. F R O N D front and the stem like structures is called the style. Okay, so this uh, this was about bryophyta. Bryophyta as uh, amphibians of the plant kingdom. Examples are mosses. A mosses ka example is uh, funaria is a moss. Funaria. Then you have liverworts. Examples of liverworts is uh, marchensia. So this was about bryophyte and next is pteridophytes. Pteridophyta. Pteridophyta. Now the pteridophyta has well developed vascular tissues. Vascular tissues? What is vascular tissues? I don't know what is vascular tissues. Vascular tissues is required in plants for the transport of water, minerals and the food prepared by the plants. Like water is absorbed by the roots. My lower hand is the root. The water will be absorbed and it will go up the stem and then it will reach the leaves. My upper hand will be the leaf. So this marker you can understand it as xylem 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 transports the water and minerals from the roots to the stems okay so these are the vascular tissues then you have phloem phloem transports food from the leaves to all other parts of the plants not just to the roots to all other parts of the plants so xylem and phloem these together form the vascular tissues and this vascular tissues are first present in pteridophyte. They were absent in thallophyte. They were also absent in bryophytes. But they are present in pteridophytes. So, pauses. Now that becomes a very important feature of pteridophyta. Pauses vascular tissues. Have true roots. stems and leaves. Now what are the examples of pteridophyta? Examples include ferns. Ferns. Marsilia is actually given in your NCRT. What is that? That is also a type of fern. It is an aquatic fern. So next two divisions left are um, the, the angiosperms and the gymnosperms. Now these three divisions, thallophyta, bryophyta and pteridophyta, these are called cryptogens. All three, this, this and this, these are called cryptogens. What is the meaning of cryptogens? Crypto. Encryption. Have you heard of encryption word? So, crypt means to hide. Crypt means to hide. And cryptogens means those plants in which the reproductive system, reproductive system is inconspicuous or hidden. Hidden reproductive system. That is why they are given the names cryptogens. The other two divisions we are going to study further the angiosperms and the gymnosperms, their reproductive system is not hidden. They are very conspicuous and that is why they are called phenerogams. Also, they are called spermatophytes. Spermatophytes. What is the meaning of spermatophytes? They produce seeds. Gymnosperms produce naked seeds. They are not covered by fruit. Angiosperms produce seeds which are covered by fruits. So that will be seen in our next video. Thank you for watching and please subscribe for more such videos.